the next one is the woman at the well. We find that in John chapter 4, uh, from uh, 1 to 26. What takes place is that Jesus goes to Jacob's wells. A woman comes out. And uh, the unusual thing is this woman comes on her own. For a woman to come on her own to a well, uh, which is a place where women would chat, um, there's got to be a reason. And, and we find out through that story that uh, um, she'd had five husbands and she, she'd gotten the six. She had been stealing uh, some of these ladies' boyfriends or uh, husbands, and she wasn't well-liked by the ladies. She was well-liked by the men, but not by the ladies. She had to come on her own, and she didn't come at the same time as the ladies came to draw water. She came at a different time. Well, as she came to the well, what did she see? She saw a man, didn't she? Hallelujah. Um, because of what she'd done in the past, uh, we can assume that she started to think the same as she'd done in the past. Aha, a man. Last time I taught this, Felicia started to laugh. Hallelujah. She saw a man. She started to do what she'd done. And she was very successful at catching men. She's starting down that path. And, of course, Jesus started to talk to her. And she finds out that he's a Jew. This causes a problem because she's a Samaritan. And the Samaritans and the Jews don't get on. Now we find that there is a, a difference. So she sees that he's a Jew. But because of the way that Jesus starts to talk to her, she starts to realize he's a rabbi. He's a teacher. This starts to change the way that she uh, deals with Jesus. And she actually starts to call him sir. Now, this might be the first man that she's ever called sir, because one of the revelations is that um, when Jesus sends her to go and bring her husband, she said, I have no husband. In other words, she'd not had a husband. Yes, she was married, but she didn't submit to any of those men. She didn't treat those men as a husband. She didn't treat that man as her head. She was not in submission so she's saying, I've never had a husband. <clears throat> now she's saying that to try and deceive Jesus because she's looking at Jesus as number seven. But, uh, of course, Jesus, with a word of knowledge, says, no, you've had five husbands and the man that you're living with at the moment isn't your husband. That causes her to realize he's a prophet. Hallelujah. And we're seeing a progressive revelation of Jesus. Now, this lady, it doesn't stop with us recognizing that he's uh, a prophet. Jesus actually says to her when she says, do you know, we've been taught that when the Messiah comes, he's going to tell us all things. And you're telling me things that you shouldn't know. I wonder, are you the Messiah? And Jesus said, I who talks to you, am he. And I've met many people from false religions that say, Jesus never said that. And yet you'll find it in John chapter 4. I am he. I am the Messiah. Hallelujah. But he didn't stop there. You see, she went back into her village. Now what's happened? You see, a strong man has sent the woman out. Ain't it? The strong man that's ruling that village has sent the woman out. Do what you do. Get this man into sin. Then we can forget about him because he's got no authority over us. Jesus has to resist that sin. And he converts the woman and she's sent back into her village. And what does she do? She witnesses to the whole village and the whole village comes out to listen to Jesus. And I think it's in verse 42, it says that the whole village say, uh, now we believe because we've heard that this is the savior of the world. That revelation, you see, the Jews think that their Messiah is the savior to the Jews. The Muslims think that their, uh, their version is the savior of the Muslims. And all the religions think that. They're... But Jesus is the savior of the world. He'll save everyone that will come to him. And that will make him king and obey him. He will save everyone. But we know that not everyone will do that. So again, we see this picture. A strong man sends a human out that is filled with particular demons to try and stop Jesus from his particular task in, in that situation. 
and Jesus overcomes that. And we see the multitudes, a whole town, a whole village comes out and gets saved because the strong man was dealt with. And let's have a quick prayer. In this situation, I suggest two of the spirits was a controlled spirit. She was a very controlling woman, more than likely Jezebel. But I feel that Jezebel actually deceives a lot of people into thinking this kind of spirit is just works in women. It doesn't. It works in men as well. So if we call it a strong control spirit, then men can realize that they've got to deal with that as well. Hallelujah. And a spirit of seduction. Jezebel, her three main uh, weapons are seduction, witchcraft, and intimidation. And in that order, she'll try and win you through loving you. If that doesn't work, she'll start using witchcraft prayers against you. If that doesn't work, she'll just simply try and intimidate you and browbeat you into um, submitting. But let's just pray. And the consequence was a spirit of freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost and a spirit of purity. That's the opposite to sexual sin, isn't it? Purity. So let's just pray that very quickly. Father, as we break the power of any strong control spirit, whatever name it might have, we bind you. We command you to come out in Jesus' name. We give you no place. Any spirit of seduction, you come out in Jesus' name. We give you no place. You cannot operate in this church, in this congregation. And we loose the spirit of freedom and liberty in the Holy Ghost and a spirit of purity. Desire for us to be pure, to be holy, to live righteously, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.